So, uh, in the last lecture, we were discussing about the equivalence of these two theories, that is Cantor's theory and Dedekind's theory. Dedekind's theory is based on the cuts and Cantor's theory is based on the sequences of convergence sequence of rational numbers. And we have seen one way that if a uh, section is given, then a convergence uh, then a convergence sequence is given, then we can identify a section. Is it not that that is if x n be a convergence x n be a convergence sequence, this is continued uh, continued from previous lecture. Okay, then limit of sequence will be there later. So x n be a convergent sequence. Uh, suppose x n be a convergent sequence of rational number is given uh, of rational numbers. Be given, then we can identify or we can identify a section LR, is it not corresponding to this? Corresponding to this sequence Xn, which represents the number X, which represents a real number x h follows okay we are taking lower class l contains those classes such that uh, x n minus a means set of those x n minus a a is any real number let a be any let A be any rational number represented by the same sequence A etcetera and the real number x n minus A is represented by x minus A. So, set of those numbers A for which x n minus A is uh, greater than fixed is there that is positive and after some time is greater than equal to 0 of 4 n greater than equal to say n 1 and upper class R with the set of those sequences we are taking for which x n minus a is negative from and after sometimes greater than say n 2. Now, these two classes L and R will decompose this entire sequence x n we can break up and this class x point which correspond to x n will divide give the section l r. This we have discussed already. Okay. So, this is no point of going. Now, we will do it today the converse part that if suppose the section is given then corresponding to this section we can generate a sequence of rational number which will give the same real number as the section L r represent. So, let us see the converse. Conversely, we can say a convergence sequence convergent sequence corresponds to a section correspond will always will always correspond to a section okay as follows so let us suppose let lr be a section let lr be a given section of positive rational number real uh, value of rational numbers rational numbers. Let L r be a given section of rational number. Okay. Now, this is a num here is a some rational number say x. So, here this L this is r. Now, if we pick up any two rational numbers, then the property of this section A that uh, 
we can identify the two rational number one belongs to this class another belongs to this class such there the difference of these two can be made as a small base we place okay so this is the property which we have here. so since lr is a section and we know we know that two rational number rational numbers can be picked up picked up can be picked up such that one belongs to one is in l and the other is while other is in r and their difference and their difference uh, and their difference is less than any pre assigned number f sin r is it not pre assigned positive rational number f sin r rational f sin this we know that we can identify that uh, two rational numbers one belongs to l other belongs to r and their difference can be made less than is a less than f sin r please so for any f sin r one can identify these two numbers so this is given okay how shall we so let us suppose let a sequence f sin r n be a convergence sequence corresponding to the number 0 this is be a convergent sequence convergent sequence corresponding to the number 0 okay zero so it means zero is this point so there are the sequences are there such that mod of f sin l n is can be made as small as please so this sequence correspond to a convergent sequence correspond to zero let us suppose this one now take any x 1 take a point x 1 in belongs to l and x 2 in r such that the difference of this difference of this x 2 minus x 1 is less than f sin r because any element of l is less than element any element of r so x2 minus x1 is positive but this difference should be less than f sin r1 okay now choose another one now now next choose x3 choose x3 in l and x4 in r such that x1 is less than x3 less than x4 le, uh, x3 and x4 is less than x2 so what we are doing is this is our number say i am taking x1 here x2 here the difference of this is less than f sin r1 then i am picking up the number x3 in l l and a number r x4 in r so obviously x3 is less than r is such that x4 minus such that x4 minus x3 is less than say f sin r2 continue this so if we continue this then what happen is we are getting a sequence so we are getting continue this so we get a sequence of rational numbers x1 x3 and so on x2 and minus 1 and so on <coughs> in l and x2 x4 and x2 n in r such that such that the difference of these two is it not such that difference of x2 n minus x2 n minus 
is less than epsilon n. We are choosing in this fashion. Okay. Now, this way we have so corresponding to a section, we have now generated a sequence. Now, this sequence x1 or, or uh, suffix index is in L or even index is in L. Now, we claim that these two sequences x 2 n minus 1 and x 2 n, this will be a convergent sequence. Uh, why? Mm. Clearly, the sequence x 2 n minus 1 and x 2 n are convergent are convergent sequences of rational numbers of rational numbers why why it is so because the reason is the x1 x2 because x1 is less than x3 is less than x5 less than and so on x2 n minus 1 and all are less than x2 x2 lying in r2 x2 lies in r2 so whatever the sequence you are choosing it's in r2 uh, there is every element will be in less than the element of uh, x2 now so this sequence this imply the sequence x 2 n minus 1 is a monotonic monotonic increasing sequence is it not increasing sequence which is bounded above which is bounded above by x 2 and we know every monotonic increasing sequence which is bounded above is convergent. So, it is convergent. Similarly, the sequence x 2 n is a convergent sequence because x 2 n is also what x 2 s f because because x 2 is less than is greater than x 4 is greater than x 8 is greater than and so on. It is a decreasing sequence and bounded below it is monotonic decreasing sequence of rationals which is bounded below by x 2 is it not it is a monotonic decre decreasing sequence or oh, which is bounded above sorry which is bounded uh, yes which is bounded below uh, or maybe bounded above it is a decreasing sequence which is bounded below by by which number by x uh, by which number this is x 1 x 2 x 3. So, which is bounded below by what every element of this every element of L. L which is bounded below by the elements of of L is it not. So, this L therefore, it is convergent and converges to. So, these two sequences are convergent sequence. Okay. Now, <laughs> once they are convergent and also they satisfy equation further mod or x 2 n minus x 2 n minus 1 this is less than epsilon n which tends to 0 when n is uh, 2 n minus 1 2 n minus 1. So, this is less than uh, which goes to 0 as n tends to infinity is it not because epsilon n is a sequence converging to 0. So, this sequence it means these two sequences are identical sequence 
So, this implies that sequence x 2 n and sequence x 2 n minus 1 will give the same real number. Same real number say x. Is it okay? Now, we are so we have uh, with the help of this section we have generated the sequence and we now we claim that uh, this section if you take any element in the lower class okay then if l is does not have a uh, upper bound uh, list uh, uh, say upper bound then element of the lower class will be less than the element of up, uh, uh, upper class and so on so next we show next let next let a be a rational number A be a rational number belonging to R. Belonging to R upper class and R be another number and R be another number belonging to R which is less than A. less than a. So, this is the point here we are taking r this is a here we are taking a point a and this is our r. Now, these are the sequences x 1 x 3 and so on odd sequences here we are getting x 2 x 4 and so on these are the sequences x 2. So, if we take the difference of this from the lower term what you get a minus. So, a minus x 2 n minus 1 all terms this is equal to a minus r plus r minus x 2 n minus 1. Now, a is here a is greater than r. So, this term is positive. Now, r is a rational number belonging to so every element of this will be greater than the element of this. So, it is positive. It means that whenever you choose any number in the upper class, it is always be greater than the elements of the yeah, unless r has a some least number. So, therefore, this number a is always greater than greater than this any element of this sequence. is it not unless r is unless r has a least number. Similarly, we can prove the other similarly we can show that any element of this. So, similarly similarly every member of r member of r uh, every member of uh, l sorry this is all already every member of l is less than the terms of this sequence x to n okay but these two sequences are equivalent they give the same number okay so thus the section l r defines the same number defines the same number as the sequence either x 2 n minus 1 or x 2 n because both give the same number is it not. So, but if r is any least number then it will belongs to one of the class either r n and in that case also if we in case r has a least number a number a then then we have 
a minus x 2 n minus 1 is less than x 2 n minus 2 n minus 2 n minus 1 which is less than say epsilon of n. Okay? So, what is shows that this thing goes to 0 it means a is identical to the sequence x 2 n minus 1 this number identical to this sequence similarly a is also identical to x n. So, this shows that both are equivalent and okay. So, this gives the okay. So, this proves the equivalence of the two terminology okay. So, this is complete the uh, concept of this uh, number theory real numbers with the help of Cantor's and dead kinds. Okay. Now, let us come to the <laughs> now we will discuss the limits of sequences. This pen is not good. Limit of sequences. Okay. Suppose a n be a sequence, we say the sequence a n is the limit let a n be a sequence of real number. I am just saying now real number. Okay? I am not uh, uh, now taking any rational or something real numbers. Uh, yes. Huh? Sir, uh, I think uh, from the previous screen was perhaps better. Better? Uh, uh, picture is better. Okay, okay. okay. Let a n be a sequence of real numbers. Suppose, uh, we say limit of the a n as n tends to infinity is say L means for a given epsilon L greater than 0 for a given epsilon L greater than 0 there exist there exist a positive integer n naught such that the difference between a n minus l this difference can be made less than epsilon l for all n when n is greater than n naught. Okay? The meaning of this is very clear suppose we have this number l and there are the sequences a 1, a 2, a n and so on. We say this sequence converges to L. It means that if we find out the distance from each L from each term distance of each term from L then this distance keep on reducing and reduce it to 0 then we say the sequence a n converges to L. Basically, this mode is the distance. This mode means the absolute difference between the two values. Now, a n and l both are real numbers. They can be represented by means of a point on the real on the axis. So, once you have the point, you can identify the distance and this is the distance a n minus l. Why absolute value? Because there may be a sequence which may converge from this side, it may go from left hand side. So, l may be less than this, l may be greater than this, so, but in absolute value the distance must tends to 0 as n tends. So, we say the sequence is said to be convergent when the difference between a n minus l or the distance of a n from l keep on reducing, reducing and reduce to 0. So, this is the way we can. Now, this has been generalized to an arbitrary metric space because this is the case when we are dealing with the real numbers only or complex numbers. Then once you have the real or complex number the distance notion is simply the absolute value is it not? If the absolute difference between the two point is the distance of the two real number or distance between the two complex number. But suppose x is an arbitrary set of points then the notion of the distance will be defined in such a way. So, that the axioms of the usual notation must retain okay that is <coughs> this uh, so that we will take a in fact 
in fact, in an arbitrary space, in an arbitrary set of points x, okay, which has which has the notion of the distance by d, notion of distance given by d, okay, given by d, we say a sequence a n converges to l under d if for a given epsilon greater than 0, there exists an n naught such that the distance between a n comma l <coughs> is less than epsilon <coughs> for all n greater than equal to n naught. This is a general way, but we are not dealing with the general that is why I restricted only mode. But what is the distance function? Distance means that a distance d a function d is a mapping what is the metric or distance function this is non negative it always be greater than equal to 0 and 0 when a and the two points are considered okay then we get the uh, uh, reverse uh, if a n and l position reverse we get the same value and then the uh, triangular inequality. So, these conditions are satisfied then we. So, we are not there that is why we will drop this one and we will simply take up the mode sign just to say okay. uh, because here uh, in fact, uh, uh, I wanted to introduce that metric distance, but because it is early. So, that is why it is not. Okay. So, we will take this. <coughs> now, divergence sequences divergence sequence. We define the divergence sequence n is said to be diverging a sequence a n is said to is said to uh, tend is said to tend plus infinity is sent to plus infinity if corresponding to a positive number if corresponding to a positive corresponding to a positive number a a however large However large, however large, however large, however large, a number an integer n not a uh, integer n not greater than zero can be found can be determined such that a n s are greater than a for whenever n is greater than n naught. We say the sequence a n tends to plus infinity. So, these are the sequence a 1, a 2, a n and so on and this tends to plus infinity. It means the limit of this sequence a n is not finite, it is infinite. So, it is a diverging sequence, a sequence is said to be diverging when the limit of the sequence does not exist uh, either it will be a uh, plus infinity or minus infinity then it is said to be a diverging sequence. Okay. So, when you say it is a uh, sequence a n goes to plus infinity means that whatever the number you choose you can always find an integer n naught such that the value of the uh, coordinate of the sequence will exceed by that number. Suppose, I say a is equal to 10 to the power 10 to the power 10, then this number is there say 10 to the power 10 to the power 10 like this. Then one can identify a number n not here that all the terms of the sequence after this will greater than this number. So, we say it is tending to plus infinity. 
Similarly, we say a sequence a sequence a similarly you can tends to minus infinity if corresponding to if corresponding to a large positive number a large positive number a n naught can be determined n naught can be determined determined such that a n's are less than minus a for all n greater than or equal to n naught then it is tending to minus infinity okay so a sequence which is either so a sequence a for which either the limit of a n as n tends to infinity is plus infinity or minus infinity limit of this tends to not tends to plus infinity or minus infinity or minus infinity is it not plus infinity or minus infinity is said to be is said to be a diverging sequence sequence of real numbers okay of real numbers okay for examples are suppose i take a n the sequence say n is equal this will diverge okay similarly other sequences also you can say it will diverge to plus infinity if i take a n equivalent to say minus n it will diverge to minus infinity like this and so on so okay then oscillating se uh, sequence oscillatory oscillating sequence a sequence a n of real numbers is said to be oscillatory is said to be oscillating if if the limit of a n as n tends to infinity does not exist and limit of this neither does not exist or neither neither tends to a finite value neither tends to a finite value all all null all plus infinity or minus null plus infinity or minus infinity plus infinity or minus the meaning is that an is such where the limit does not exist limit does not exist means that is limit of the sequence an when n tends to infinity does not exist because when we say the limit exist it means whatever the path you choose because where is the definition of the limit when the limit is there this is the definition of the limit that if the limit exists means this is less than n. so whatever the path you choose the limit of a n minus l can be made as small as we please the difference between a and l should be made as smaller in this as one can decide, desire there should not be fluctuation 
but if such a sequence are there where the this difference cannot be made smaller sometimes it is small sometimes it becomes very large then in that case the limit does not exist or along different uh, subsequences it has a different values then the limit does not exist for example if suppose i take n to be minus 1 to the power n then along the positive path it where it will go to 1 if n is even that is when the sequence are chosen like this a 2 a 4 etcetera the limit will go to 1, but if the sequence is chosen to be odd then n is odd <coughs> that is a 1 a 3 this limit will go to minus 1. So, the sequence when n tends to infinity does not tends to a one value because it fluctuate like this here this minus 1 here is plus 1. So, what happen is a n my you cannot find any suppose I take 1 is the value then a n minus 1 cannot be made epsilon because as soon as a n uh, odd becomes it then it will be minus 1 minus 1 minus 2. So, it becomes very large similarly here. So, it does not go to that does not have a finite value limit. Similarly, if you take the sequence minus 1 to the power n n say this one then what happen when n is sufficiently large when even number it will go to plus infinity it goes to plus infinity if n is even and goes to minus infinity if n is odd. So, it does not have the limit okay. similarly however the sequence a n which is minus 1 to the power n by n is not an oscillating series is not uh, the uh, is not a sequence sorry uh, is not an oscillating sequence why oscillating sequence are those sequence with limit does not exist I, the limit is not tending to a finite value or plus infinity or minus infinity. Now, this sequence tends to value 0 though it is uh, alternately positive negative, but what happens if this is the value 0 you are getting minus 1 by n plus 1 by n <coughs> then as n increases you are taking minus 2 by n plus 1 by 2 n like this. So, this goes to here this goes to here. So, after a certain state the difference between a n minus 0 can be made as small as we please is it not. So, that is why this sequence is a convergent sequence converges to 0. So, it is a not a zero, but convergent okay. this is convergent. Then bounded sequence. Uh, so, we say uh, the here also we can uh, characterize the oscillating series so finitely oscillating and infinite. Finitely oscillating series when the limit tends to a, uh, does not tends to finite value, but does not go to plus infinity minus infinity, but it is alternates and infinite means that is uh, when we are unable to get that is a sequence is said to be a finitely ordered uh, no remark a sequence an oscillating sequence. sequence a n is said to be is said to be finitely oscillating if if there exists a number a if it is possible to find a number a greater than 0 such that all the terms of the sequence remain less than a all the terms of the sequence remain less than a for all values of n we are able to get it just like this series this sequence is a finitely oscillating because a number 1 can be obtained such that mod of this a but this is not a 
because it does not even ache you cannot find otherwise otherwise uh, infinite oscillator sequence okay so we can characterize these two into two okay bounded sequence we have already discussed so no point of view bounded sequence and then every convergent sequence is bounded a sequence a n is said to be bounded a sequence a n of real numbers is said to be bounded if there exist k and capital k such that a n is greater than equal to small k greater than equal to is less than equal to capital k suppose we have the two bond it's not necessary that uh, we have the same bond okay so a sequence an is said to be bounded below if there is a small k such that all the terms of the sequence are greater than equal to k then this is this will give the bounded below bounded below while this thing will give bounded above okay bounded above and if we combine both these and let capital a be the maximum of k and capital k okay in fact this is capital k only okay then in that case mod of an is less than equal to k then we say this sequence is bounded okay bounded so lower bounded above bounded and bounded or like this okay so we get this one and every convergent sequence is a bounded sequence that we have seen in the so result is every convergent sequence is a bounded is bounded sequence is bounded i think this proof we have done is what about the converse can you say every bounded sequence is convergent the answer is no but converse is not true however converse need not be true because if you take the for example if you take the yes if you take the sequence an minus 1 to the power n this is a bounded sequence but not convergent okay so we can get this clear now fundamental theorems of this limit uh, is the same as this so we are not um, touching those thing okay let's see the results which is very important result there one result which is known as the sandwich theorem sandwich theorem what this is says is if sequence a n b n and sequence c n let a n b n and c n be the all the sequences such that of real numbers such that all the sequences of real numbers such that a n are less than b n less than c n okay suppose we have this sequence and this is to for all values of n values of n that is three sequences are given and they satisfy this inequalities for all n and limit of n as n tends to infinity is the same as the limit of c n as n tends to infinity and suppose it is l then what this result says then the limit of this sequence b n will also be l this is known as the sandwich theorem that 
if we want to find the limit of the sequence B n, if we are able to identify the lowell and the upper bonds for each n that is a n uh, sequences where the corresponding terms are satisfying this condition and if this uh, left hand sequence and right hand sequence converges to the same limit then the middle sequence will also converge to the same sequence. Okay. <coughs> okay. The proof is very simple proof is not that because proof is why it is so because a n is given to be l. Okay. So, since limit of this a n is l. So, it implies that a n must lie between l minus epsilon l and l plus epsilon l for n greater than equal to n 1. Similarly, limit of this b n is l. So, this implies that l minus say same epsilon l we can choose all different terms so, c n sorry limit of c n. So, l minus epsilon less than c n less than l plus epsilon l after integer n greater than equal to n 2. Now, if I picked up the n greater than n 1 and n 2 choose n naught as the maximum of n 1 and n 2. So, for all n greater than n naught this condition is satisfied for all n greater than n 2 this condition will satisfy. Okay. So, we get from here a n and b n lying. So, b n is the number lying between a n and c n. So, we can say l minus epsilon l is less than b n is less than b n at the most equal to less than l plus epsilon l for all n greater than n naught is it not clear. So, as n tends to infinity limit of the b n will go to n. So, this okay. now this will be, this is used to find the limit of the complicated expression. For example, what is the use? Suppose I take this problem prove that limit of this as n tends to infinity 1 by n square 1 by n plus 1 whole square and so on 1 by 2 n square is 0 limit of this is 0. We wanted to show this part. So, we know we know that 1 by n square 1 plus n the lowest term is 1 by 2 n up and largest term is this. So, which calculation shows that 1 by n square 1 over n plus 1 whole square n 1 by 2 n square. This will be less than total terms are what n plus 1 starting with n to n plus 1. So, total term is n plus 1 into 1 by 2 n square and greater than n plus 1 into 1 by n square okay. or clearly it just we get this is it not. Now, as n tends to infinity, this is our a n's, this is our c n's. So, as n tends to infinity, because the denominator is having larger degree than the denominator, so this will go to 0, this will go to 0. So, a n and b c n limit of this a n is 0 is the same as the limit of c n. Therefore, limit of b n must go to 0. So, this implies limit of this b n must be this is about b n s. Okay. So, this shows the very interesting things is it like this. Now, monotonic sequence there are also similar, similar types of this monotone monotonic sequence sequences. Uh, we have seen that uh, there are two types of sequences which are either in non decreasing or in means a 1 is less than or equal to a 2 less than or equal to a 3 etcetera. These are called the non decreasing 
sequence monotone sequences non decreasing okay it keep on in there but maybe constant also or a 1 greater than equal to a 3 this is called non increasing sequence monotone sequence or if we have this one then it is called the strictly increasing monotone sequences okay monotonic and if we have this one then we say strictly decreasing so we get this one okay now if this monotone sequence are there and if it is bounded above say non decreasing sequence which is bounded above then it will have the limit if it is a monotone decreasing bounded below then it will also have a limit so these two results we have already discussed it is it not so just i will just result uh, <laughs> okay the a monotonic decreasing sequence a monotonic increasing sequence tends to either to limit or a monotonic increase non decreasing sequence non decreasing sequence which is bounded above bounded above will be convergent will be convergent similarly a monotonic non increasing sequence which is bounded below which is bounded below will be convergent <coughs> in general a monotone sequence the limit of the monotone sequence will be either finite or plus minus infinity in general but these are the convergent criteria so either monotone in dec non decreasing or strictly increasing or strictly increasing or strictly decreasing that's what this also now this will be used also to find the limits suppose for example if we take this a n sequence edge under root n plus 1 minus under root n and I ask what is the limit of this. So, if you go uh, to the limit as n tends to infinity what you are getting infinity minus infinity which is indeterminate we cannot get it, but if we slightly if we manipulate it we get divide and multiply by this. So, when you multiply by this number then you get a x square minus a square that becomes 1 and this is equivalent to this sequence is it not. Now, this sequence is monotonically is a monotonic curly what increasing or decreasing decreasing and tends to 0 as n tends to. So, limit is 0 that is what is it not. So, we will look the some limits also which are very interesting particularly the 2 3 limits which we get uh, as an exercise next time ok. Thank you very much. <coughs>